What's up everyone, Edwin Anthony here, back at it again with another video. This specific video is for those who want to set up shipping with USPS or calculated carrier rates. In a previous video, I spoke about how to set up your shipping using manual rates or if you're using um, rates that have to do with your drop shipping. I'll see if I leave a link of that video down in the description as well as a pinned comment. And so if you guys want to watch that video, go ahead and watch that. But this one, we're going to talk about how to set things up where we're in the U.S. and we want to set up USPS automatic calculated carrier. So first, let's start off. What does this mean? What this means is that if you have a product that you're shipping from your Shopify store to your clients, you don't want to guess how much a product is going to cost according to USPS. Because as you know, they have kind of like their own rates on how much they charge depending on what you're trying to sell. And so for that reason, we want to see how we could use the system. So let's start right away. What are the first things that we need to prep up? Phase number one, let's prep up our products. Because a lot of this stuff has to do depending on what type of products you guys are selling. Let's go right to it. So we're going to click right here where it says products. And from here, let's go, I, again, I'm not sure what you guys are selling, so these items are just demo products. And so if you guys are selling, let's say, t-shirts or you know anything that has to do with clothing, as you guys know, you don't need like a very heavy box for something like that. That could even fit even in some envelopes, right? So let's go over here to one of the products. And from here, we're gonna scroll down. We have several variants already set up for this. This is not a singular product because yeah, this specific product comes in two different colors and it also comes in different sizes, as you can see right here. And so what we're gonna do is that we need to update the values of the weight. So notice what I did there. I went inside of the product and then I went inside of the variant edit screen. And then from here, I scroll down and I'm gonna see this right here where it says shipping. Now, if you guys don't have variants in your products, you don't have to go through what I just went through right now because you'll find this shipping in this screen over here. You'll find, you just have to scroll down and eventually when you scroll down, you'll notice that it's somewhere around here. But because we have variants, uh, we need to go inside of that specific variant, scroll down, and this is where the shipping comes in. All right, so from this point, you guys need to determine exactly how much this unit piece weighs, okay? Um, it could be set in pounds or it could be set in ounces, as you can see right here, or kilograms or grams. You guys could change the values of this however you guys see fit. Uh, but for simplicity purposes, we're just going to leave this weighing one pound, okay? Um, the real weight value that you're supposed to enter here is somewhere along the lines of not just the value, I mean, excuse me, not just the weight of the article itself or the shirt, but also once it's packaged, how much is it going to weigh? Because you could probably add like a whole bunch of bonus stuffs in there. You could add like something that just makes it weigh a little bit more. And the last thing you want is USPS charging you extra because you misweighted the item. And so the weight that you add for the article is the final weight once you package the product alone. Right. So if they buy it alone and you're packaging it alone, how much does it weigh? Not how much does it weigh without packaging? So let's make sure that you guys do this. And then right here, apply weight to all variants of it. So you don't have to go to this page one by one to all of the variants. Right. You don't have to do one by one of all of these. You just click on this guy right here and it'll apply it to everyone. Let's go ahead and press save for now. All right, so that part is done. So how do you guys do this in a bulk, right? Again, this is step number one. Without this step, this gets a little complicated. So what you might wanna do is click on this guy right here where it says check all. In this case, we have more than 50 products, so we're gonna click on this link right here. Notice what I did there, select all plus 50, okay? And that not just selects, um, that doesn't select just this page. As you can see, there's paginations of products, right? So we select everything in the database. And then let's click on edit products to take us to this different system of Shopify. If you guys haven't seen this before, this is kind of like similar to Microsoft Excel, um, where you could go ahead and change the values of things, right? All in a bulk, 
like you know you go like this and then like this right I press shift in order to select the range and then I just type here and all of this stuff changes like let's see 25 hold on 25 like that you see how it all changed instead of going one by one by one by one okay so now that you guys understand this what you guys want to do is manipulate the columns so let's go right here and we're looking for weight right here there it is so let's let's click on weight and let's get rid of some things that we don't need such as SKU uh, we don't need the compare price like that's just stuff that comes out of default product category that must be new okay so now that we have that here let's uncheck that and you see all the weight values right there and so if you want to say that every article weighs one pound you could just go ahead and click this one and then click all the way towards the bottom and you could see how it auto loads there and then select the range you see how it turned baby blue and then go ahead and make that change change it to the one pound or whatever it is that you want to do it and then press save once you press save um, scroll all the way to the top you'll notice that there'll be like a whole bunch of dots um, these dots what it means is that there is a change that's been made but it hasn't been saved yet and so when you press save it'll start this mechanism will just kind of like do this all in bulks and that's the end of that first step so the first step is make sure that all your products have a weight value as you can see right here so that um, Shopify can use the weight value to automatically speak to USPS and tell them how much the package weighs that's the whole point that's the major reason why I'm showing this to you guys okay all right so once you have that done uh, let's get out of here okay and the next thing that I advise you guys to do is set up a location uh, again I'm pretending like you guys haven't seen my other videos so this is kinda like from scratch so let's go to where it says settings and let's go to where it says location and then from location if you guys don't have anything set up here I recommend you guys set up one what should you guys set up a location by the way this is fictitious this isn't real what location should you set up as all right guys so there is a huge difference between those that are drop shippers those that are private suppliers if you guys don't know what that is let me explain that to you very quickly because I don't want anybody mixed up or confused or anything like that all right here we go so what type of merchant are you a drop shipper is a business that connects with a public vendor and it sells its products without initial investment of inventory from the owner so in other words that the orders received to your store anybody who purchases inside of your store will be individually purchased after the fact from the vendor in other words people buy from you and then after you collect that money you go ahead and buy from someone else and you say hey send it to my customer they're the ones that are doing the shipping the vendor ships out the product and that's not the case for this video this video is more for private suppliers uh, private suppliers are businesses that purchase inventory in bulks from a private supplier and stores it at home or in a local facility in other words you the merchant you're responsible for shipping the product out to the client okay so if you're watching this video and you're like I'm a drop shipper respectfully this video is not for you uh, you have to go to my other video that talks about drop shipping and how to do that this is more of if you make your products at home or if you purchase the products and they get shipped to your home or they get shipped to your facility that's what this is and the reason why we're in location is because we're setting where is the warehouse location or where are the products located that's what this is all about okay all right so let's pretend that we're all here I ship my own products I ship it from home but I don't want to put the location of my address I don't want people to know my home address that's where I ship it from right I don't want that instead what I recommend you guys to do is go to USPS and get yourself a PO box okay um, let's see here if I could go to the main website so if you go to the main website and you go to shop or just go to your local post office and talk to a personnel there and say hey how much is it for a PO box you know one of those little ones or whatever you don't have to go all out as far as how much that costs just go you know economical and then you pay a monthly fee and they give you a key and you're good or you pay for it for the whole year which is much more convenient anyways let's pretend that you went ahead and you got that PO box you're gonna get PO box one two three four five 
at an address, right? Because the, 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 your local post office has an address, right? So if you're going to go from your house to the post office and you don't know how to get there, you put it on Google Maps, that's the address. And so right here on the location, you would put the address of the post office as address number one. So here, let me go add location. Let's pretend that that's what we're doing. And we're going to call this um, Turbo Demo Store um, Dispatch Location. Okay, I'm just making this up. And we're gonna fulfill orders from this location. And address number one, the value here is the physical address of the post office. It could be one, two, three, four, five Jefferson Street. It could be whatever. But right here, right here, you're gonna put PO box one, two, three, four, five. That's whatever PO box that you got it from. From you know, whatever city, Miami, Florida, da, 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 da. and then the phone number. The phone number, you could leave this blank, right? But if it mandates a phone number, then just put the phone number from the post office. The point is, is that if any returns occur or any customers finds out what your address is, they're not going to your house. They're instead seeing that it's a post office, right? And, and any dispatching outwards, inbounds, or anything that gets returned doesn't go to your house, but it goes dedicated to the post office, okay? So let's pretend that you guys have added a location that's very important. You're going to see that this is set for default. And now let's go to where it says shipping and delivery. And now we're going to go ahead and start creating some zones and so on and so forth. So right here in shipping, let's click where it says manage. And on manage, what we're going to do is that we are going to see some default values. If you already added this for this example, we're not going to touch the rest of the world yet. Let's leave this as is. This one, I'm going to assume that these values uh, were added just by default because I don't recall adding any of these values. So for simplicity purposes, let's go ahead and start deleting some of these. But notice that I have not erased domestic, right? Because this is the region that I want to focus to. We'll talk about the rest of the world later. So let's start off with add a rate. And so from here, we could do one option where it says use carrier app. Use carrier or app to calculate the rates. And so right here on this drop down, we could say discounted prices of USPS that Shopify shipping is being a broker. This means that Shopify shipping has tons of merchants just like yourself who do this. And for that reason, um, you know, they're, they want to give you a discounted rate for using USPS and they want to give you the labels, which you could shop directly from Shopify. Shopify is pretty much saying, hey, look, you know, we got a discount with USPS. You could use us or you could use your own account. And so what I'm telling you is do your homework. Go over here to USPS.com. Find out how much does it cost to ship from one location to another. Let me see. 33180, 33181. Um, I'm shipping today. My, I'm not going to use priority mail. We'll talk about that in a second. Instead, I'm going to use this right here. I want to calculate my price based on shape and size, right? I'm going to click on that and it's going to say, well, how much is that, you know, thing caught uh, weigh? I'm going to say it weighs one pound. Okay. Zero ounces. Cause it's like, let's say one shirt and it's going to be a package, not an envelope or anything like that. No large package, just a regular package. And then from here, you'll notice the example of different options. Forget all of these for now. What you're looking for is this one right here, the retail ground. And as you could see, you know, for that example, it's going to cost around this much 880. It would be interesting for you to do guys to do your homework to find out how much it would cost uh, when you're using, let's say this one right here, parcel ground, and then just test it out. All right, next up handling fee. So one thing is what USPS charges. And another thing is how much you guys want to charge um, for the handling fee. 